Welcome my peace, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'd be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peace, my peoples. So let's talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like OMG, let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Portia meeting up with Ricky Smiley, basically. It seems like they're trying to go there with Ricky Smiley and Portia trying to see if they have a little love fling, a little love connection, but they work together, so it's a no-go. But anyways, they roll <laughs> they roll escape basically. Portia busts her ass and basically Ricky Smiley gives her, you know, um, re try to resuscitate that booty of hers because he don't want nothing to go wrong with it. And so basically they talk about, you know, how Portia's been so busy and basically her having a family, having a family and wanting kids. And they talk about the baby nup and all this other stuff with Todd. And now, you know, Portia realizing that her career is really big now, like she's really busy. And she kind of don't have the time for a child, but she wants a child. She doesn't want life to pass her by. And Ricky Smiley was like, well, we can practice at my house. We can practice what boyfriend is, how boyfriend should treat you. We can practice about how to make a baby. We can practice all that good stuff, you know, if you let me and if you want me to. But, you know, Ricky Smiley, you wearing them dresses on Comic View, you're an L-go. Um, I'm just saying, like, the, him, his dresses, his wigs, or whatever, I, I think it would be really hard to take him serious in a relationship, even though we know Ricky Smiley got kids or whatever, but that's just, like, um, it's just too much. Like, I, could, I wouldn't be able to take him serious or whatever. I, I would not just have visions of him in a dress and him in a wig or whatever, even though, you know, basically it was a comedy skit. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything meant to say that's basically his, you know, sexuality of his preference. But like I said tons and tons ago in my, all my videos that I did when I do talk about sexuality, I don't want anybody on the down low. I don't want anybody that's bisexual. Just let me know from the jump street. I don't want no surprises. I don't want none of that. I don't want no down low, no nothing. And that would be in the back of my mind. You know what I mean? Because I have a preference. I like straight men. So, but you know what? Sometimes you're not always able to get what you want in life. And sometimes you got to settle. So maybe Portia is not going to settle for Ricky Smiley. He's just ain't her type. <laughs> I think he has enough money for her, but I think they have more of a friendship. And basically, it seems like Portia and Ricky Smiley have a genuine friendship, which is cool or whatever. So anyways, we move on from that. Then we get to the Bailey Agency. Oh my God, the Bailey Agency is up and running. We finally see the Bailey Agency. We haven't seen it in a while, but it's up and running. It's running. And basically, we end up seeing Kenya. Kenya walks through looking all good, looking, you know, she walks in there looking good, basically. And she's talking to Cynthia about having, you know, the PSA at her, um, at the Bailey, you know, agency, basically, and try to get the floor plans and different things together and stuff like that because she wants to bring 10 women that were battered and was abused and they are survivors now to have a makeover, a, a makeover with dresses, with shoes, with hair. I, I, I just know I've seen this before like this is something i seen before but anyways it is what it is and so they end up talking about you know um barcelona basically and they talk about this issue with the situation with you know portia and basically leaving because she feeling like she was ganged up on and things like that and then also they talk about nini about you know what she said about the uber driver and her comedy performance and it is what it is. But basically, it ain't stopping the ring on their parade. So it seems like it was a good idea for Kenya not to include Sheree into this PSA adventure and have her work with her. Because it seems like when Sheree put things together, it goes away. She has, she has problems with contracts, problems with everything. She has to switch up different people. With this, with this piece, P essay it went fine it went well there was no drama the women were done well the venue was there it was just easy it was just like it was nothing for kenya to put this um venue together you didn't see the drama you didn't see oh my god what if it doesn't work oh my god what about this what about that but none of that happened like it was it, it went well like it, it was no sweater for her back so anyways we move on to Candy. Candy's talking to Don Juan. She's talking to Todd, basically. They're talking about getting more property, buying property, and all this other stuff. You know, Candy was like, she wants to be <laughs> Monopoly. She was like, Google's trying to buy. Google's office might be somewhere in the vicinity, and the property value is going to go up. Yes, sir, because I know a couple of friends that are looking and waiting on... Um, where Amazon is going to have their headquarters because they want to buy a bunch of properties. I don't know if it's Colorado or not yet, 
But anyways, so, you know, Candy wants to buy the recycling place across the street or whatever. Don Juan was like, you don't have enough employees. And then, you, I mean, Don Juan was just like, there's not, you, you can't, you got too much going on. You got too much. Todd got too much. Don't buy any more properties. Todd comes in the room and he was like, Oprah Winfrey didn't stop at one thing. Oprah Winfrey didn't let anything stop her. And so that's when, you know, Don Juan was like, well, Oprah Winfrey got like a thousand employees. And that's when Candy says to Don Juan, hey, listen, you're supposed to be working. I get on your job. Get me some people hired because I need to buy some things. So it is what it is with that situation. And so then they end up going into another room and they are talking about Nini leaks in the situation. It seems like Don Juan, Todd, and, and you know, um, Candy all in agreement that they feel like Nini should be on the tour or whatever. And they feel like, you know, she made a mistake. She said something wrong. She didn't mean it. Or what, and then they, you know, Todd brings up to the president that he grabs women for JJ's vaginas and nothing happened to that. And it, it wasn't like it was in a serious environment. It was like a comedy. It was comedy, you know. So it is what it is. And basically, you know, Candy's feeling some type of way because she has built this relationship with Nene and she doesn't want anything to get jeopardized up because they came a long way and they showed us clips of how they came a long way. Yes, they used to go at it. They used to fight. It used to be a thing. But, you know, even though that all happens, you know, and Candy feeling some type of way because she saw, you know, the... That she saw on the internet Nene crying and all this other stuff and she really felt bad because Candy do have a warm heart but just don't cross her just don't do her in or whatever but so it is what it is so they gotta let can't they have to let you know they well you know um Candy already let Nene know that she's not gonna be able to perform on the escape tour because of that because of you know production because of the group because of you know venues and businesses just feel like it, it, it wouldn't be a good look and they'll probably pull out so then we move on to neat we move on to, to sheree sheree is basically she's decorating her basement and she wants it to be a man cave she wants it to be ready for tyrone when he gets home so her her bird can have somewhere to stay to rest his head and basically he was supposed to be doing the basement and basically he's talking about he's gonna buy her a house he's gonna buy her this and he's gonna remodel i guess he's making money while he's locked up all that money that he supposedly stole the AKA Robert somewhere, buried somewhere. You know, I don't know. They shouldn't be talking about him spending money and got money on TV because the IRS is watching. But it's just probably a, it's just probably TV because a lot of the reality TV shows are fictional. Um, we've seen it happen before when 50 Cent was saying he got all this money. He went to court and he was just like, I don't have all that. I just do that for entertainment. <laughs> and so... It is what it is with that situation. So she's talking to Tyrone on the phone or whatever. And, you know, this I love you. I want to be with you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to get home. And he's like, oh, my God, you're just so wonderful fixing this basement up for me, doing this for me, doing that. She, and he was like, I thought you was going to wait on me. She was like, no, I couldn't wait. I just had to do something for you, baby. And he was like, you're such an incredible woman. Every, everything you like to hear on a telephone when you're talking to your jail word. <laughs> So it is what it is. So he's talking about Sheree's like I'm talking. Sheree's talking about I want you to buy me a house. You know, there's some gym equipment that is expensive. Because he was like, what about the gym area? So it's just like, okay, we gonna spend this money when I get out. So I guess you know when you are dating someone that is like that when they get out and they got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, so we find out Tyrone has two adult kids and he has two teenager kids. So basically, they're going to get married. She wants a wedding. They're going to do this. They're going to tie the knot. So I guess maybe that's going to keep Sheree on the show for next season because she's going to be marrying Tyrone if he does get out because he's supposed to get out in two months. That's what she tells her daughter. It is what it is. And then we switch over to Nene. Nene's in her basement. That's so shady how you get Sheree basement all messed up. Them working on it. Her firing, firing contract after contractor. And it's taking a long time. And then boom. You get to Nene's basement. It's all put together. Bravo is shady. Production is shady with that editing. So anyways, Nene's talking to, you know, Brett, uh, Brad, whatever his name is, basically about a career. He does not want to go to college. He does not want to do that. And Nene's not going to force him to go to college because she didn't even want to go to college either she made it and she's successful so um her son wants to be a comedian she said it's not easy and so you know you got to get ready you see what happened to me you see i got roasted you see i got kicked off a tour you see people just turn their back on me because i said a joke so be ready and you got to be ready to go and so 
Nene says she's going to mentor her son and be there for him. So I guess if he wanted to go to real estate, he would have been talking to Greg. So it is what it is. That's good that he has a mother that's able to help him in his career in entertainment and basically give him a leg up because not every black man has the opportunity or the connections or the people to get to where they need to go. And most likely doors do close in their face, black men and black women at the same damn time. So if you have a helping hand, if you have anybody that can help you, it is really wonderful to have that because the doors will shut in your face quickly, fastly, in a hurry, no matter how good your talent is, unless you get somebody that can see beyond race and just see your talent. So anyways, moving on from that. <laughs> so all that is good. So we get to Noelle. Basically, she is going to be studying to be, you know, I guess a dentist assistant. I don't know. She's work, she, she's doing internship at the dentist's office. Basically, Cynthia shows up. Cynthia's asking all kinds of type of dip, dipsy question like oh as a the guy the the guy that owns the place oh he's not able to function without you you know no what was like he's been functioning for many years without me uh, <laughs> so it was just it it went crazy like it was just real like dipsy you know so anyways then you know basically Cynthia was like I want you to meet Will me and Will we're getting together we're getting close I haven't brought no man around you in a long time no well but Will is heading it right so I want you to meet him. Noelle, she's opening up to meet him. She's open to meeting Will. So she's going to meet Will or whatever. So boom, bye, ya. <laughs> boom, bye, ya. So anyways, it's all good. So it's good that Noelle, you know, she's staying close to home. And basically she's doing an internship where, you know, she's not getting paid. That's when Cynthia was asking her, are you going to help me pay bills? She was like, mom, this is an internship. Like, come on, Cynthia. So, um... Anyways, it is what it is with that situation. And so then we get back to Sheree. Sheree's talking to her daughter, Callie, basically. And Callie's like, so who's this guy you dating? You know, I seen it on the blogs. And she was like, well, he's in jail. He should be out in two months. And Callie doesn't really have a beef with it. She was like, what, what, whatever. Like, you chose, she was just like, with all the fish in the sea, you choose one that is locked up behind bars. And it is what it is. And But she's still open to meeting, you know, um, Tyrone. So, and, you know... What's her name? Um, Sheree. She ain't she ain't scared about it. She ain't shy about it. So it is what it is. And so then we move. <laughs> so then we move on to Kenya. You know, so Kenya is basically getting the ladies ready and everything because now she's at the salon. You know, she has she had the other cast members donate, you know, wedding dresses and shoes and things like that. So all the ten ladies that are um are survivors of domestic violence are meeting up in the salon they're getting their hair done they're getting the dresses put on the dresses look nice i'm surprised that everyone found a dress that fit or whatever and the people that are doing their makeup and their hair actually did an excellent job and, and like candy not candy but you know kenya she came to slay with these ladies she made sure that these ladies didn't look like a mockery there was going to be made a spectacle of she made sure these ladies look at the best that they could possibly look but basically getting nice dresses and making sure that their hair their makeup their nails and everything was done to perfection you know it's not the best dresses but they all look decent they all look good they all look happy they all look like you know they felt good about it so it was really something good to see um kenya do as well because these ladies been through hell and back and you hear the stories about them being young having babies being abused being molested being taken advantage of you know and actually opening up and telling their story to the world you know so anybody that watches this show and <laughs> anybody that's gonna review my video so it was good to see that and then you know the ladies look nice and you know Kenya was very open and she really feels like you know she's doing some good and hopefully she'll be making her grandmother proud because her grandmother you know helped her through her abusive situation when she was 16 when she was young or whatever so the lady the ladies look nice and you tell me Kenya did not look good in that purple and that gold around that gold right there around the neck I was like oh my god look at her looking good and that purple purple blue and white are Kenya's colors so anyways everything is going well that the ladies look good everything's cool everything is really really good so anyways now we get to the main event at the bailey agency and the ladies have all arrived but we didn't see eva this episode so i guess we're gonna see eva eva next episode but we didn't see her this episode so basically all the ladies arrive they show up and they show out kenya absolutely won the award of the best dress of the night with that all white soft pretty 
long ponytail and then the next up what we will kind of say oh Sheree and Portia are, are number two and then Candy's number three then Shamia's number four and Cynthia's number five and you know um Nini's number six yes so that's how we're gonna do that it's just that <laughs> so anyways moving on from that so the event goes well we see the PSA is put together well um, it, it's been said that Kenya has a production company and they did excellent on this PSA. It was wonderful. But Cynthia kind of threw me back when she walked in and she saw the lady and she was like, oh, that's my dress. And the lady hugged her. I just thought that was kind of tacky. The lady didn't feel offense to it or whatever, but I just thought it was tacky for Cynthia to do that. But it is what it is, in my opinion. So everything is cool. Nini and Portia, they talk to have a conversation. It's like Nini is actually mentoring Portia now and they're actually building their friendship and their relationship. Portia she don't know what else to do with the thank yous and all this other stuff so i don't know what she's gonna do next to try to get these ladies to forgive her or whatever basically you know um candy marlo wasn't there either where was marlo she wasn't invited i know marlo has been a victim of the vex domestic violence i believe i'm not positive but she wasn't invited nor was eva nor was kim thank goodness kim wasn't there there is a savior of the night we got not to see kim but we're gonna see that witch next episode and it was so nice to see you know um kenya when she was talking to cynthia and say you can take the trailer park you can take the trash off the trailer park but they're always still going to be trailer park trash and she was talking about none other than kim and her clan so anyways everything is fun everything is good you know cynthia's mother's emotional it was sad a lot of the stuff was sad to see as well a lot of the ladies were shocked about Shamia. They didn't know what type of situation Shamia was in. Me either. So, now moving on. Guess who shows up? Mark Daly shows up looking good. And, you know, Kenya seems... Um, Nene Leak seems pressed. And so do Sheree. They seem like they was jealous and pressed that, that you know... Kenya's man done showed up. Her husband done showed up. They seem pressed. You know, Nene even had to say, oh, so is he's better than the cardboard. But she seemed pressed. Like, she wanted it not to be true. She wanted him not to be on the whole season. Like, she seemed pressed. She just seemed like, damn. Look at her shining. Shining with these event and then shining with her husband coming through. And, you know, Sheree was just like, I don't even know if they really married or whatever, but he's real. And then Sheree goes up to and asks him about his earrings and his nose, like, damn, this and his earring. Like, it's a little off, but I guess he's, he wants to be, he just got this earring two years ago. You know, he has gray hair. You can tell he's an older man. He's a businessman. But why made, what made him get an earring in his nose? But you know what? He wanted to do it. So I don't know. Don't ask me what a 40 something year old man all of a sudden want to get his nose pierced. Sheree is just like, last time I seen that, that was cool. That's when Super had it. That's when my baby had it. He looked good with it. Mark, on the other hand, Sheree was like, where did you get it done at? He was like, I got it done in the village. I was like, oh, shit, you got it done in the village. And so, basically, Sheree is like, come on, what's this dude doing an earring in his nose at his age? He's 16 and 17. My son don't even got an earring in his nose. So, anyways, she's throwing shade, and basically, she throws some more shade. Um, she was like, so when you're going to move to Atlanta, you know what I mean? So what's the question that, you know, Kenya was like, yeah, that's the big question Then Todd jumping. Cause you know, Todd and Candy got to throw this two cents up cause they're the biggest couple of the show. You know, and Todd was like, you know, um, well, I think it was Candy that said, you know, he's actually from New York. I, I, whatever Todd said, he's from New York, but he actually moved to Atlanta. He was like, these Southern women got some things on you to make you do your thing. So basically, Todd was like, you know, she convinced me to move to Atlanta, and this is the place to be. But the difference is between Todd and Mark Daly is Mark Daly has uh, restaurants that are up and running and on point, and he's there. So. You know, you always got to keep an eye on your business. You can trust people, but that's when you start trusting people and not being around your business. That's when things start to happen. That's when things start to fall apart and money start to disappear. And plus, he just he just brought a prop. He just paid out all his property, um, his apartments or, or condos or whatever luxury apartments that he has in New York. He paid them off. So I don't. It doesn't seem like he's. If he paid them off, I don't know. It doesn't seem like he's ready to move to, you know, Atlanta. So, I guess if Kenya is still filming next year, I believe he's possibly going to try to do something better about being on the show more often because, you know, 
it's alleged that Kenya, you know, was suspended and they wanted him to be on the show, but he showed up. He showed up in that fifth hour. He showed up in the 11th hour. So now he made it to season. It is what it is. Kenya's happy with her husband. They left early because they got to go do the nookie nookie. And, you know, um, Nene was shady. They asked also, oh, you think you think um Mark Daly and Kenya are in love or happy, whatever? Nene was like only person Nene was like, I, I believe Kenya for sure is in love. I believe Kenya for sure is happy. But I guess she's trying to say that Mark Daly ain't happy with Kenya or she's the only one in this marriage and it ain't even him. So what kind of undertone shade was that, Nene? Anyways, peace and my one love to all my peeps and my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It would be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peace, my peoples. It's Mary Jane.